friends showed me a hot video of my GF of 8 years with another man and when I confronted her. She had a mental breakdown. Her parents now beg me to help her. About 3 weeks back, my buddy Alex and another guy I know, Mike, stumbled upon a video that flipped my world upside down. It was of my girlfriend Jamie, hooking up with some other dude. Mike had been browsing through some obscure hot sites, and by pure chance, recognized her. He hit up Alex, and together they broke the news to me. When they told me what was going on, it was like my brain short-circuited. I couldn't process anything until I actually saw the video for myself. And when I did? Man I barely lasted a minute before I was dry heaving. The video was cut straight to the action, Jaime's face right there in plain sight. It was brutal. After dropping Mike off, Alex had the good sense to make sure I didn't go back to our shared apartment with Jamie. He insisted I crash at his place for the night. We had a few beers, but mostly just sat there in silence. Alex tried to get me to talk about what was going through my head, but I was completely checked out. I had no clue what I was feeling, so I told him that. It was like I was moving in slow motion, barely able to think beyond the moment. He didn't push, and eventually I passed out. When I woke up the next morning, it hit me. Our relationship was as good as done. I took the bus home, probably looking pissed off and lost in my own head. I couldn't help but wonder what people on the bus thought of me, sitting there looking like a wreck, trying to pull off some brooding Batman vibe. When I got home, I found Hamy getting ready to head out. She asked where I'd been and why I hadn't called. I didn't even bother answering. I just told her we needed to talk. We sat down at our kitchen table, the one we'd built together at my grandpa's farm, and that random memory is what finally broke me. The floodgates opened. There were a lot of harsh words, accusations, and blame being thrown around. I can't get into all the details, but basically, I broke down sobbing, asking her how she could destroy something we'd worked so hard to build. She looked confused, asking what the hell I was talking about, so I hit her with the video. That's when she lost it, tears, begging for forgiveness, but I was too far gone to hear any of it. There was more yelling, more crying, and finally, I told her we were done. And that's when she just, shut down. She crumpled into herself, eyes closed, still crying, but she didn't say a word. It snapped me out of my rage, and I had no idea what to do next. I tried talking to her, shaking her, but nothing. She was completely out of it. So I picked her up, put her in bed and went back to the kitchen. I called her parents, Alice and Julio, and told them they needed to come over because Jaime was having a breakdown. I didn't explain much, just that they needed to see this for themselves, face to face. After that, I turned my phone off, sat back at the kitchen table and tried to make sense of what the hell had just gone down. Her parents rushed into our apartment, demanding to know what the hell was going on. I didn't come right out with the truth about Jaime's cheating. Instead, I told them she needed help. She was in bed, zoned out like a zombie, but physically fine. They couldn't get through to her either, and eventually, I had no choice but to spill the whole story. I didn't want to explain it without Jaime being able to defend herself, but I had no other option. I showed them the video. They were devastated. I told them we had a fight, but I didn't lay a hand on her. I guess she just couldn't handle the pressure and shut down. They decided to take her to the mental health clinic at her university. I chose not to go with them. The next day, Jaime finally woke up. She was stable, aware of what was happening. That's when she dropped the bomb, she claimed the video wasn't consensual. Her family immediately decided to take it to the cybercrime division of the police. They didn't press her for more details because of her fragile mental state, but her parents were clearly embarrassed and unsure of their next steps. The psychologist told them to let her rest and support her until they knew she wasn't going to spiral again. After that, they took her back home. Jaime's older sister, Jackie, filled me in on everything. She tried playing peacemaker, asking if I was seriously going to call it quits on the relationship. I told her honestly, I didn't know if there was anything left to save. Two days later, her parents asked me to come over for a talk. I agreed and went the next day. When I arrived, her parents and Jackie were there. We sat in the living room, all of us looking beat down and drained. They told me we'd talk about Jaime later. First, they wanted to focus on me. They wanted my parents to get involved. That rubbed me the wrong way. I'm a grown man, and besides, my relationship with my dad is already strained. But I was exhausted and felt out of my league, so I gave in. After all, marriage had been on the table at one point. Finally, we got to the topic of Jaime. She was holed up in her room, miserable and full of shame, but otherwise okay. For now, she was staying with her parents, but if the police needed her for the investigation, she'd be staying with Jackie at a hotel. They understood I needed my space. They had already filed a report with the cybercrime unit in the city, their place is about an hour or two out in the suburbs. They said I'd be needed for the investigation, but I explained that I wasn't the one who found the video. I promised I'd try to get Mike involved instead. Her parents apologized for Jaime's actions, but I told them she was the one who owed me an apology. 
and they needed to stop treating her like a kid. They agreed but asked me not to push it right now, worried she might break down again. They laid out what the psychologist had to say. Jaime had a spontaneous nervous breakdown. There's no history of mental illness, but the doc said it was from built up stress from her studies and the intense argument we had. She just cracked. She needed time to rest somewhere safe. Apparently, the psychologist almost called the cops on me, but her parents talked them out of it. With no signs of physical harm, they let it go. The conversation turned into a mess, apologies, mostly from Alice, tears, and a lot of noise. But it was clear, they wanted to take control of everything. Jamie's care, her education, finances, the whole investigation. It was like they were handling the cleanup while I was pushed to the side. Eight days later, in the middle of the night, Alice called me. She was frantic, begging me to come over. Jaime had locked herself in the bathroom with a kitchen knife, screaming for me. That hour felt like hell. I'm pretty sure I nearly killed myself twice on the road getting there. And thank God my country's behind on tech, or I'd be dealing with speeding tickets from highway cameras right now. When I pulled up, Alice and Jackie were waiting outside, looking terrified. Jaime had calmed down a bit and Julio was with her in the room. They pleaded with me to go see her and I didn't even hesitate. The whole situation was messed up and I just rushed straight to her. She was a total wreck. Pale, exhausted, like she hadn't slept in days. The second she saw me, she started crying and reached out for me. Whatever anger, frustration, or anxiety I had just disappeared. I held her, and she clung to me, sobbing, apologizing over and over, begging me not to leave. I hushed her, squeezing her tight, not letting go. Eventually, she fell asleep. And I just sat there, trying to wrap my head around everything. Seeing her like this ripped me apart. This wasn't where I thought we'd end up, not even close. I never imagined our future like this, especially not during Christmas. I felt like I was losing my best friend, the woman I thought I'd spend the rest of my life with. She's the one who pulled me out of my own depression when even my own family turned a blind eye. Hell, she's the one who taught me to keep journals, to write down what I'm going through just to process things. The cruel irony is that it's because of her that I can articulate the details of her affair and just how much it's tearing me apart. Jaime's not a monster. She's kind, patient, and genuinely one of the best people I've ever known. If I'd tried to list all the things we've done for each other, all the moments we've shared, I'd probably double the length of this story. I love her, and I was ready to face whatever life threw at us, side by side. And then she shattered all of that. I woke up before Jamie and headed to the kitchen for some coffee. Jackie was there, and she laid it out. Jamie's had these episodes twice before, but this one was the worst by far. While Jaime slept, the rest of us tried to figure out a game plan. Alice is going through chemo for breast cancer, Julio's got a business to run 20 minutes away, and Jackie's job is already breathing down her neck. And Jamie. She desperately needs help. The whole situation was a mess and we were all completely wiped out. I mentioned therapy, maybe even suggested a mental facility, and man, that almost cost me my head. They all hated the idea, but none of us could keep an eye on her 24-7. They begged me to push off breaking things off, at least for now, and to stick around to help her. There was definitely some guilt tripping involved, but I could see they were at the end of their rope. And honestly, because I still cared about Jaime and respected her family, I gave in. That's where I made the wrong call. After I left, I reached out to Mike to talk about the investigation. He agreed to loop in the police. Then I called Alex and unloaded all the crap that was going on. He didn't hold back, told me straight up this wasn't the move. He thought sending her to a mental facility was the safest option and that sticking around would just get me hurt. But still, he had my back and told me to call if I ever needed him. I seriously love this guy. I already set up a therapy consultation for myself, and Yami's got one lined up three days from now in my city. Honestly, I just want to take a ridiculously long nap and run away from this whole nightmare. Update, it's been over two weeks since my last post where I got proceeded to get my butt handed to me. I'm not complaining, you guys were right. I do need to leave and start living my own life. A lot has actually happened since then but thankfully most of it's boring, sad and disappointing. Got myself a behavioral therapist which something I should have done a long time ago. I have different problems unrelated to this that Jamie did help me through most but a professional really does make a difference. Gave me a lot of hard questions, important questions that forced me to put my life into perspective. It was liberating experience. Finally talked with my own family about this. For context I'm not very close with my actual parents, particularly with my father broken home and all that. I consider my aunts, my father's four sisters, who stepped up to take care of me as a child to be my real parents. So if I mention family, I really mean just my four moms. Turns out, they were more involved than I thought. Jaime talks to them. She loved talking with them about me and our relationship. They got closer for it too. She asked so many questions about me. What I liked, food, 
hobbies, what my childhood was like. She'd ask advice from them about so many things. What to do when I get pissy, how to get my butt moving, all that cute stuff. Around a year ago when they noticed that I started acting positively when they played around with the topic of marriage, Jaime and my family started to get ready. Three of them have families with at least three children each, so to help ease the accommodation, they saved money to pay for themselves and anything extra goes to the wedding, to us and whatever after. They even talked about engagement rings. Calling them disappointed is an understatement. With the bullshit happening now, they opted to give me half of what they saved for the marriage to help me out and also offered to take me back again which truly is a massive help. My biggest problem this whole time was a source of income. I didn't have a job lined up out of my city, still don't, and my savings are meager. With all that settled, I gave my employer my resignation letter, cancelled my lease and have by the end of the month to sort my affairs. I'm leaving for good. As for Jamie, I've gradually stepped out of whatever's been happening with her and around her. Talked with her family or more like told them that I'm leaving. Gave them info about psychiatric hold and made them handle her appointments with her psychologist and whatever else she needs. It was a sad affair, really. I know it doesn't seem like it, especially with Alice and Julio making me stay and take care of Amy, but this is a first time for all of us. They raised four great kids. Their relationships are great and they even extended that to me even when they barely knew me. Jaime ducked up the worse and this isn't something anyone can expect anyone else to handle with ease and grace. I mourned the loss of a potential family that I could have been proud to be with. For the POS who filmed her. I still haven't confronted her about it but Mike and Jackie shared what she told the police and how the investigation's going. It was a Korean national she says she met on social media for a fling. She said they only ducked once but that was immediately shot down. The video showed two different distinct rooms and got pressured to admit where it was in case they can get anything like CCTV social media posts, logbooks, witnesses etc. And that they did. One hotel still had recordings that day, two hotels with logbooks containing names and dates, and their DMs. She didn't mention rape, blackmail, or drugs in play, only mild intoxication which was all obvious in the video apparently. Everything but the recording was consented. They were some possible routes to take in terms of damages but when a lawyer got contacted, it was pretty much dead on the water. POS being a Korean national currently in Korea muddied the legal waters. They can do nothing else other than contact relevant Korean authorities, gather as much evidence and wait. But the lawyer wasn't confident anything might stick. As far as they know, they have no evidence that it was even POS who set up the cameras beyond that POS stayed the night before and the cameras are obviously long since gone. There are far too many angles POS can play to delay or even win any lawsuit that reaches him. It will be most likely expensive, drawn out, and with very little chance of winning. So they gave up that route. POS is getting off scotch-free. Why'd Jamie do it? I don't know. Before, I didn't have the guts to ask her. Now it doesn't really matter. I'm not as exhausted as before and my mind's been clearer. I'm leaving for good regardless of why she did it. I can just walk straight out with no explanation or maybe leave a letter for her, thanking her for the wonderful time we spent together, the love we shared and a final goodbye. I'm romantic like that. Still, I've decided to handle this with as much grace as I can. I'll help when worse comes to worst, don't lay blame on myself or her family, and not even mount pressure on Jamie for ruining everything. Not for Jamie but for my own twisted sense of self-gratification that I did all what can be expected and more. I will leave with my back straight and nose held high. Funnily enough, this did eventually show me how lucky I am despite everything. Yes, the love of my life cheated on me and had the audacity to throw a tantrum over it. My future's looking a little bleak. I've found out so much repressed anxiety and anger from my shitty childhood. But I'm still doing pretty great. I have family that loves me, friends that have my back, and despite her betrayal, brought the best out of me with wonderful memories along with it. I have nothing to be ashamed of, and can say with pride that I was a wonderful boyfriend. Hopefully this will be my last update, if not, the next to be far more boring and less mouthy.